Welcome Freedom Talks. Um, I'm really, really nervous. I'm going to back up just a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm real nervous. Like about 4 o'clock today, I was trying to see how I could get out of it. But that's okay. We're going to do this. So, um, for some of you guys, a lot of you don't know me. So, my name is Beverly. And um, I uh, grew up in Stuttgart. And... Um, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on the on the bad. I want to get to the good because he has been so good to me that I want to share that with you guys, okay? So that's what I want to really focus on. But to get there, i got to get a little bit of this. So my addiction was opiates and alcohol. Um, I was probably in that addiction for a total of 27 years along with the last seven were, were the worst. Um, so I have a, I have one child, he's almost 22, and um, I'm, when I came in here, I was broken like everybody else. Um, I didn't really want to be here, but I knew I needed to because when you're in your addiction, you do really, you do some bad things. And I, um, I took a lot of money from my employer and um, I knew that I needed to get some help and I needed to get it quick because I didn't know what could happen. I mean, I knew what should have happened, but, um, and I just remember sitting here because back then when I was in the program, you came for Sunday interviews and I just remember sitting in the middle row and just looking at the set free and I was like, how how did I get how did I get here? You know, I am at a rehab. You know, how did I get myself here? And um, of course, you know, my family was trying to pump me up. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Well, whatever. I mean, okay, it's going to be good. I'm going to come here, do what I got to do. Um, but God, <laughs> but God. So. Um, I came through the program in 2015. I graduated in 2016, and I got, um, I didn't know I was so sick until I went to the doctor, and I had lost a lot of um, blood. Where's Brandy? There she is. And so um, Brandy was taking me to the hospital a lot, getting some blood transfusions, and um, I remember coming back one day, and it was a Tuesday, and we used to have class at the end of the hallway, straight down the hallway here, and it was a Mitch Bell class, and he was talking about Mark 5, the bleeding woman. So I wanted to share that with you guys, uh, just a little bit, because I, I'm not much of a, um, teacher here. So the, this is what spoke to me. Um, let me get to my notes here. I'm so nervous. Okay. Hi, I love y'all. Oh, I have to wear these now. Okay. So, um, we're, hey, um, can we put those verses? Yeah, okay. Where is she starting? In 25. Okay. It says, Now a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had ended, no, endured much under many doctors. She had spent everything she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. And I've just, I relate to that in my addiction. I've just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Even though I was here, um, I had, it was just really bad. And I, uh, having heard about Jesus, she came up to him in the crowd and touched his clothing. For she said, if I can touch his clothes, I will be made well. Instantly her flow of blood ceased, and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. So that's what I felt that day in that class. I was like, I've got this new blood in me. I'm like, I'm like brand new now, you know? And um, I was like, it did, everything I did before did not work for me. So... I'm going to try this Jesus thing. 
And then that's when I realized that I was going to be baptized and I was going to do this. And that's what I did. So I was baptized. And um, so after graduation, I went and I transitioned out for a few months. Well, almost a year. Almost a year. And um, I wasn't looking for a relationship. I really wasn't. It was like I could care less. But... um, a relationship happened and he was um, 11 years older than me it was nothing that I would picked for myself so that's why I felt like it was a God thing and um, so within three months we were married and because and I prayed about it you know I did all the praying and all the journaling because I wasn't I didn't like this man like he was liking me. So it wasn't about being in a relationship or hurrying up and getting married so you could do all the married stuff. Keep it a little PG here. And so um, we were married for three and a half years. And one morning he just wakes up on his way out the door to go work and he tells me that he doesn't want to be married anymore. And I get no explanation why. And by this time, I am, I'm coming and I'm being a facilitator here every day. And um, then when that happened, I just moved here. I mean, it was like this was my life. So um, still didn't talk to him for pro- probably almost four months. I never got an answer. I never got any, you know, why or anything. And that was hard, guys. That was really, really hard. But... I was in my I was in a safe place. I had a lot of good people around me to support me, but um, that was really hard to go through, and I still struggle with it. And I still struggle with wanting to drink. I'm not going to lie, but I haven't. That, that doesn't make me any better than anybody else. I just want you guys to know you're going to struggle, but as long as you stay obedient and you get you stay around good people you're gonna you're gonna do okay you're gonna do fine um so that's what happened i got i got a divorce and um still i don't even still don't know why but um so i lost a lot of um self-esteem that you get when you're here in the program you know you start feeling good about yourself you know and uh, I lost all that when that happened. I'm slowly getting it back, though. Um, you know, but um, yeah. So I um, I decided that um, I don't know if I decided or if the Lord said it was time. But um, it was January last year, I guess that I went and um, I went to do a transition house. And I'm just going to be real honest with y'all. I did not want to do that. It's rewarding. Don't get me wrong. It's really rewarding. But I did not want to go do that. But there again, I'm being obedient because I needed that for myself. Because I believe if I would have went out there and not done that, I would have probably, um, I'd have probably gone backwards. And so... Um, October the 4th, it will be nine years for me that I've come through John 3.17. And um, so, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so, you know, he is really good, guys. As long as you stay obedient, and, and these facilitators that are here, they are for you guys. I know a lot of times you don't feel like it, but I can promise you, these ladies have been where you're at. These graduates have been where you're at. They love you, and, I, and I, all I can say is, I remember a couple weeks ago when Mr. Clay was here, and he asked, I don't even know what he asked, and he just looked at everybody, he was like, do you believe that? And I don't know, I mean, I feel like a lot of people were just going... And I just remember him saying, okay, if you don't, you may not believe it, but I want you to believe that I believe it. And that really stuck with me. I even went back to my job and shared that with, in my group one day. And I didn't even have to write it down to remember it. 
So I was pretty proud of myself. <laughs> so um, I almost missed it. I almost forgot about that. So anyway, um, I went through peer training, peer recovery support training. Um, it'll be a year in May. And I uh, got a job in the end of January. No, February. Uh, at Unity out here at Newport to be the peer recovery support specialist. So that's what I'm doing now. And be careful what you pray for. And I should have known that because I prayed that I would be able to uh, work more in the mental health part of things. And that's exactly where I'm at. And um, I'm very uncomfortable, but it's right where I need to be if I'm uncomfortable. So um, with that, um, I just wanted to share some hope with you guys. Hope really has been on my, um, my mind a lot lately. Um, isn't that cute? Good job, Chris. Yeah. So, and let me just go back to the, the traumatic event in my life that happened when I was here. Um, these ladies, most of these ladies, because some of them weren't on staff yet, they really helped me, um, get through that um, time of, uh, yeah, because I probably wasn't very nice a lot, and, <coughs> but they were there for me, and, um, and when, when you're in recovery, you know, family doesn't have to be blood. It's like you, you get a new family. Like, you guys are going to have a connection with each other that nobody's going to have with anybody. You know, I can call them up. They're going to know what I'm, what's exactly what I'm saying, what I'm feeling, you know, versus saying, you know, something to my sister. She don't know because she's never been in addiction. But, you know, you're going to have your people that you can call on. And don't be afraid to do that because when I struggle, I don't even know what I'm saying when I'm telling people. But I feel like if I voice it, it gets it out and Satan don't have a hold on you. That's what that's that's for me. So I'm just going to speak for myself, okay? So um, when Chris asked me to do this a couple of months ago, I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm not a very I don't like speaking in front of people, and especially if it's going to be recorded and you can watch it later. I don't like watching myself. But um, I was like, okay, I can. I think she thought I was going to say no, but I was like. I can, I'm going to do this. So every time when I, I, would, I would just think, what can I do this on? And um, hope, hope would always come up. And so I just wanted to read a little bit about hope and share one of my favorite verses and maybe show a picture or two. And we'll just go from there. So um, hope, hold on, pain ends. Y'all like that? That's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that on my own. I can't take all the credit for that. <laughs> so anyway, hope is considered the most important in life because it gives us the motivation and drive to keep moving forward even in the face of challenges and difficulties. It allows us to believe the possibility of a better future and to have a positive outlook on life. What gives a person hope? Demonstrate, demonstrate love and care. We may never know what people are going through in their lives, but going out of our way to let them know that somebody cares for them will give them hope and inspire positivity. I thought that was really neat, okay? So even though I don't really know, I don't really know any of y'all, really, um, but just know that people are praying for you and they're cheering you on from somewhere else. And um, so Jeremiah 29.11 is my all-time favorite verse. We're not going to put that. Okay. Okay. Let me. Oh, good. I, I went right to it. <laughs> I didn't have to search for very long. Okay. Hey, that's okay because I've got it right here. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for you, for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope 
and I hope. Well, let's just go on to 12. You will call to me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you. This is the Lord's declaration, and I will restore your fortunes. And where I banished you, this is the Lord's declaration. I will restore you with the place to the place from which I deported you. I wasn't going to read all that, but apparently I needed to. So, anyway. Um, um, I guess we can just uh, do the pictures and then... Okay, so this is me. <laughs> this is me in my um, drinking error of how long ago um that was probably 20 probably 10 2010 <coughs> yeah that's me mm. that's terrible isn't it no all swelled up okay so this <laughs> was the Christmas before I uh, came to John 3.17. So this was probably 14. Yeah. Um, look at, yeah, see those, look at those eyes there. Yeah. My, that's my niece. She looks scared to death. <laughs> now, that I, now that I look at it, I'm like, man, she looks scared. <laughs> but then the next picture is us one year later after I graduated the ministry. Yeah. Well, uh, and I just had to show my son. This was past Christmas. That's me and him with my Sesame Street shirt on. Yeah. He's tall. And so this was us this past Christmas. I said I would never do the matching pajamas and put it on Facebook, but guess what I did? That's his little girlfriend. I thought that was funny. I just had to share that with y'all. Never say never. <laughs> and this is me now because you know what? I love myself now. I'm he- okay. Um, I didn't have that a couple of years ago. That, um, and I don't want to say it was taken from me because I don't, but. Now I can, I can look at myself and say, you know what, I love her. You know, she has been through a lot. She is, um, she's going to be okay. And, and so are you guys. You are going to be, you are going to be okay too. And um, yeah, I just love myself. Can we, uh, can you, can we, can y'all see that very well? So uh, about a month ago, I went to Atlanta to a um, summit, and somebody presented this, but I won't do it as well as they did, but I'm going to try my best, okay, because that's okay. So when I first saw it, I couldn't make any of this out except for the mask. I was like, what? And then when they were like, Um, someone came through and they were of course in addiction and they weren't um, of course they didn't they didn't like their self they didn't love their self and so he could draw so after he got a little bit better like everybody else you find your um, your gifts I guess you know like you ladies you can draw you can do hair makeup whatever so this was from this one person and it was like he st- when they asked him about it it was that um this was him on the street corner in you know in addiction waiting to get his fix there on third street um and so he said the mask are he takes the drug to mask the problem you know and so um, all, that's where all the, the, like the stuff coming out of the mask. 
Um, rolling the dice. Always rolling the dice because it may be the last time, he said, that I do any of this. And um, what was the, the clock? Oh, the hands. And um, he was like, and the hands are... Um, picking like picking it all up I guess that's when he had to go do his time in prison and that's when everything was starting to fall into place and then the sunshine because now he saw the light yeah. Yeah. I didn't do it as good as it was told to me but I think we can get the big picture here yeah. the chains breaking you know he's the chains are all breaking um, from his addiction and stuff <coughs> Uh, the I don't know if that was like the time he did or just um, just time going away. I wish I could have really remembered the way it was told because it was very powerful. And of course, I cried and I thought, and that's when I thought, hey, I'm going to share this with the girls when I have to do freedom talks. <laughs> so. Um, I'm just kind of looking over my stuff here. So um, I just had this quote too that I want to show. I'm, I'm a big quote person. I like to, um, when I find things, I like to keep them and think, oh, next time I see the girls or something, I'm going to share this quote with them. For real, I do. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to share this. Let me find it. It can't be far because it was just the other day. Oh, there it is. So, it says, Trust yourself enough to let go. Shift and uproot. Give yourself permis permission to shed who you used to be. You are allowed to start over and find new ways to bloom into your best self. And that's what y'all are doing here. So on the hard days, when you want to leave, don't. Because it's really, and I know you hear this, like Suzanne say, says this at graduation. You know, she never meets anybody that says, man, I wish I wouldn't have graduated John 317. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a really big accomplishment um, because it's hard most days. And... Um, it's just very rewarding to be able to finish something like this and then get all these new sisters in Christ and um, not fight, argue with each other. Um, because, you know, y'all didn't know, I mean, some of you might have known each other before, but, I mean, y'all didn't like link up and say, hey, let's all go to John 3.17 together. You know, it's not something you... Uh, grow up saying, I mean, I didn't. I didn't grow up saying I want to be an addict one day and go to this year-long program. And But I'm glad I did because it changed my life forever. And I will continue for the rest of my days to help ladies in addiction forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, um, I think I might have a song. I don't know what time is it. There's probably a lot I left out, but I didn't want to like talk about all the bad stuff because God is really, really good. And um, y'all might have heard this song before, but it just kind of hits different sometimes. And um, I just want you guys to. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments? I just wanted to give somebody the opportunity. Anybody? Oh, okay. Yes. You say, excuse me, you say you still struggle. You still struggle with the alcohol and wanting it. Um, what would be something that you, what's the first thing you turn to or what do you do when you feel that struggle? Um, for me, I, uh, I have to play it out. I play out the whole situation. Um, I could go sit at a bar 
and drink and numb it all. That's what I would think when I was going through that. But when I left there, of course, I shouldn't be driving, but I probably would have. Um, I would have still had all them problems before I went in there. Plus, this new problem of this, of what I did. But, um, and then sometimes I just pray. I just, you know, I try to get, I try to think positive. I train my mind to think positive, not the negative. And it's really hard to do. But, um, yeah, I, I still struggle. It's, and I, and I think it's because, too, I don't like the summertime. I do not like summertime. Not because it's, only because it's hot. But that's what you swim, you cook out, and all the things you do with that. And, um, but you just stay connected to the, your people. You get, you know, you get your people. These are my people. And you tell them, and you go. You just find meetings to go to, CRs. And I don't want to give in Satan. You know, I, he took enough. He took enough. And I don't want to. I want to go just as hard for the Lord as I did for Satan. You know what I mean? So, mm -mm. I, just because I struggle, I don't. I do not plan. I never say never. I never say never. But um, I just have to play it out. That's. I don't hope that helped. Another question. Oh my gosh! I forgot about that. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's. In, do I still do transition? Yeah. Well, if I can be honest, it's not what I wanted to do. Um, but there's where that word comes in, obedient. Um, I just didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. But it's very rewarding because I watch the ladies there. Um, like one texts me Sunday and she's like, I get to go hang with my girls this afternoon. And it wasn't even her weekend. You know, she was allowed to come get her girls on the other parents' weekend to go spend the afternoon with them. Um, and you see, like, them get new jobs or get new, you know, get, be able to buy their own vehicles. And it's so rewarding to watch that. But, um, yeah, we're down at Searcy. It's called, um, not SOS. It's the SAS, Stronger and Stronger. Um but yeah, it's a really small house, and I, I like it that way because it's just small and it's better that way. So, but yeah, I do. Anything else? Nobody? Hey, Brandy? <coughs> um, will you tell us how you um, never liked to be loved? Okay. So you know on Fridays they had the staff meeting, and when um, when that happened to me, I just went really hard here. I mean, I, I never wanted to take off. I never wanted to leave. I just wanted to do from sun up to sundown, all day, every day. And I remember during one meeting one day. They were like, you know, Beth, why don't you take a day off? Take a few hours. And I just told Brandy, I said, I can't because I know what I'll do if I'm by myself. So I have to stay here and I have to keep going. And um, Brandy went with me to uh, gather my stuff because he was so kind to have it all packed up in the spare bedroom for me. Yeah. So... Uh, Brandy met me there that morning, and um, I got all my stuff, and Brandy was my roommate. We were roommates several times. She was my first roommate when I, got in the, when I came in the program, and you weren't my last, were you? I don't think so. I think it was Lauren. Lauren was, yeah. So um, 
but yeah, did that answer the question, Brandy? Or what? You'll have to refresh my memory. It was just that, the passionate. Like, I'm determined not to, because I, you know, struggle with it. Not thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and you know it's not fun. That's what I tell people. You know, like um, in my little groups I do at work, it's like I told them that sometimes when you try not to eat all the good food that you know it's not good for you, and you ask somebody that you know will hold you accountable to hold you accountable, and then when you get caught eating that, they hold you accountable and you get mad about it. <laughs> yeah. That's accountability, <laughs> and you want that. You want that. I don't care how, how long you've been doing this. You just want to have accountability. And um, anything else? I don't really know. I don't really know what all I said, so that must be a good thing. Um, but I just pray that whatever I said, even if it was one word or one sentence, that you guys got a little bit of hope um, for yourselves. Because I believe in you guys. I know y'all don't really know me, but I do. I do.